time someone doesn't think they can or want to upgrade WordPress, it comes directly to me and I have a conversation with that customer. So I've heard thousands of different reasons why somebody can't upgrade WordPress. And I've got an answer for basically all of them. And at WP Engine, we've performed over one million upgrades. It's probably over two million, to be honest. I just didn't do all the math. I just knew it was over a million. Little disclaimer, my advice is based on my experience and what I've seen work for customers. So, hey, it's worked for a lot, a million upgrades, but probably not everybody ever, because every site is unique. And there's most likely an exception to every rule I say here. Um, so just keep that in mind. And to do all of this, you will need to dedicate some time, but I'm telling you right now, it is well worth it. So let's start. We'll talk about upgrades. What are people saying? There are so many updates, I can't keep up. So they're just coming at me left and right. How can I ever be ready for AM? WordPress upgrades always break my sites. Uh, if that's true, you've probably modified core and you never should have done it in the first place, so stop that. But that is definitely not true about any site I've ever met that wasn't modifying core. How could I ever know what an update will do to my site? Oh, that's, a fair, that's a fair question. You know, there's so much things going on in these updates. How do I know if it's going to affect my site or not? I don't need the upgrade because my site just works. Hey, it works like it is right now. Why would I ever upgrade, right? Well, for one, security, but there's about a hundred other reasons. And I always stay one version behind so they can work out the bugs. Can't be having any of these bugs here, guys. Got to stay one version back. So I've heard this and a lot more. There's, there's some truth to this. There's some, uh, uh, I don't know, bias, maybe anxiety here. Uh, I can tell you. Button anxiety is a real thing for WordPress users. They are very afraid to push that button. What's it going to do? What's going to happen? Am I going to go down? I can only do it at midnight on Sunday because that's the lowest traffic. Like, there's a lot of reasons why people get the button anxiety. And it's real, guys. The struggle is real. There's no doubt about it. But if you look inside, I love this quote. For, it's, about, it's not about WordPress upgrades, but I saw it and I love it. For every external struggle, there's an internal struggle. Look inside first. If you look inside, there's a reason you're afraid. There's a reason, and usually it's not because something real is going to happen. It's just because you don't know your site. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what this next upgrade is even for, and so how could you know what's going to happen? You know, you think that every single time you upgrade, it breaks your site, but that's not true. Um, and so I understand. All of that takes time. And trying to answer those questions to get to the bottom of those, that takes time. And you didn't start a business so that you could upgrade WordPress. That was never the reason any of you started your WordPress sites, right? You did it for the content. You did it for the things that will make you money, right? And so I understand it's hard. Should I, should I work on this marketing campaign to grow my business or should I work on upgrading my WordPress site? Like, that's not even a trade-off if you're talking about breaking even, trying to put food on the table, right? But there's reasons for everything. I'm here to show you how this is going to get a lot better, how you don't have to make such a drastic trade-off, and instead, you're making informed decisions, and you know exactly what's going to happen if you don't upgrade WordPress. So first, let's talk about an upgrade. What is an upgrade? So when you say WordPress upgrade, some people just think the, the world's falling down, right? But it's much more than that. There's three specific kinds of upgrades. The first kind, and this is actually the scary one, is feature or functional upgrades. So it's an upgrade that adds or removes features or functionality. That's the one that legitimately can impact your site, for sure, right? And you need to do stuff to get ready for it. Um, it's either a major or a minor version increase, so it's the first number or it's the second number. The next kind of upgrade is a maintenance upgrade. So this is an upgrade that fixes bugs. It does not add or remove any functionality. So that upgrade cannot break your site. It is impossible. It's just fixing bugs, unless somehow you productize the bug, which that was a bad idea. Um, and then the last is a security upgrade. So it's an upgrade that closes security vulnerabilities, usually the highest priority ones, because WordPress doesn't release a security vulnerability for nothing. It's when they find something really bad. Um, it does not add or remove features or functionality. 
unless they're literally closing a security vulnerability and the only way to do it is get rid of something. I have not seen that in the two and a half years I've been upgrading WordPress, so it's very rare. But now take a look at it. You've got three types. I can tell you that the first type usually happens once a quarter. So that's the one you actually have to get ready for. The other two, they just kind of happen if needed, right? But they always happen after one of those. But there's much more of the second two than there is the first. Trust me. We're on WordPress 422. That means there's been two dot releases and one to one feature release. So right there, just looking at that, that's two to one. Back in like the 4.1 phase, it went to like 4.1.4. So th the other two, the not scary ones, are the ones that happen a lot more. So there's kind of point number one. Don't fear the upgrade until you know what kind of upgrade it is. So a lot of people don't know kind of what the process is around how an upgrade comes to happen. Um, so basically core contributors, a lot of the amazing people that are here at this WordCamp, work with the community, that's all y'all, and they create new features and they fix bugs and they do things and they create a beta release, right? Sometimes it's beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four, who knows? Um, but those beta releases are where kind of people living on the cutting edge go in and they're like, okay, is this working? You know, does it work with my plugin, my theme, stuff like that? You take those betas and you get bug reports from all those people testing them and you get a release candidate. And what a release candidate is, is that's when WordPress basically says, I'm, we think we're done. We really truly believe that we are done with this code release and if we don't hear anything back from the community in two weeks, we're shipping it, it's gonna be a real upgrade. What they hope is that everybody in the world goes and tests it, finds more things, then they go and fix those, then they go and release a really, really good upgrade. And it usually happens like that. So now you've got a little more context into what an upgrade is. Let's talk about why they're important. So raise your hand, how many of y'all own a house? Wow, a lot of y'all. Would you let this happen to your house? because somebody came in and said, hey, you really need to change these pipes out, they're leaking. No, 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 hey, uh, every time we change the pipes out, it breaks something else. Oh, yeah, great idea, no, you're right, you're right, let's just let this happen right here. I'm sure that the majority of us also have cars. Would you just let that happen to your car? Think about it, you let your, your WordPress site sit there and you don't touch it, you just let it go, and you know, it's, it's, it's missing updates, it's broken from security standpoint, right? You're missing new features. Would you just let your car sit on the side of the road? And people are like, oh, do you have a car? And you're like, of course I have a car. It's sitting on the side of the road on, you know, I-84, and I never touch it, like I don't ever go to it, but it's a car, and I can still say I have a car. You'd never do that. You would never let your car go to that kind of, you know, lake. How about, uh, all of us know somebody like that, right there. PC, ah, don't fix it, let's just strap a fan on the side, right? <laughs> hey, I've been that guy. When I was in college, I had a Pentium 3 laptop, and they never should have put the Pentium 3 in laptops because they made them really hot. When I wanted to use it for an extended period of time, I put a box fan on my lap, then I put the laptop on top of the box fan, and I ran it because that was the only way it wouldn't overheat. Well, so I was a college kid, and I wasn't very responsible, so, you know, I was that guy. And then, God forbid if any of you have a boat, but if you do, would you just let a hole in your boat happen and then be like, let's take the boat out. You know, hey, half of it's up, we're good. It's no big deal. Forget all the features that are underwater. I can sit on that top of the boat and fish like it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do, right? Guys, we would never let our possessions, our things that mean the dearest to us, get into such a state of disrepair. Why would you let your site that may be your business, your critical income, why would you let it happen like this? That's just crazy when we think of it like that. So what happens when you do the maintenance, you do the upgrades? Well, you get a well-oiled machine. You get something that has way more horsepower. Tuned perfectly, it all works together well. You've got all the options. Every single thing that comes out, you've got it. And oh yeah, you've got that fancy car alarm. It is rock solid security, right? So it's really easy for me to stand up here and say, it really is, ah yeah, take care of your house. I own a home, I don't, I don't always take care of everything immediately, right? It's, it's much, harder said, or much harder done than said. But what I'm gonna tell you next is how to go about that. How you can make sure you do have that well-oiled machine. 
all right? So step one is get to know your site, all right? Catalog your plugins. Go to your site, go to your plugins page, you can copy and paste it, put it in Excel, catalog those plugins. You're gonna list them all out, and then you're gonna rank them, high, medium, low, in respect to the criti criticality of your site. All right, now don't, don't, over, uh, don't overthink that. Don't give everything a high, because I promise you it's not. So really take some time and say, I'm gonna say this plugin is a high, this is a medium, this is a low. And I'm gonna go through an example here in a sec. Then you place a few sentences of the notes on front end functionality. What does this plugin actually do for me, right? It's, a, it's my contact form on my contact us page. Or, you know, it's, uh, it's a retina plugin that allows me to serve Mac images uh, retina, right? Tw twice as good. And then provide the exact instructions for how to reproduce that functionality. And that might sound hard, but I'm gonna show you right now one of my sites, and it's not that hard. And as soon as he's done taking the picture, I'm gonna switch sides, but I do not wanna switch it out from under him. Got it. All right, so here's, here's my site. This is the latest site I built. This is my wedding site. Me and my wife got married last August. Um, she, before she even asked me, she went to Wix.com and signed up an account and said, I'm making the wedding site on Wix. And I was like, get out of here. You gotta be kidding. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I'm not coming home for a while. I'm, I'm a little upset. She didn't get why. She's like, I don't, I don't get it. Oh man, that was a, that was a fun night. But anyways, um, so we built our wedding website. We put some good functionality into it. People get information. They also RSVP and everything. So let's take a look. This is all the plugins I have on there. Um, Akismet, I didn't turn on, uh, I didn't turn on comments, but if I, if I, am or will or was going to, I was gonna use a Kismet, but it's deactivated right now. So that's definitely a low priority plugin for me. Contact Form 7, uh, that's a Contact Us page where they can ask us questions. It's not really critical to the, the workings of the site. It's nice, but it's also my family and they know how to get a hold of me in a different way. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'll say it's medium, just because it, it's good, it's good, right? What if they have questions and you know, so that's medium. Layer slider WP, um, so that's just the slider on the home page, and it just rotates through the pictures of the wedding, pictures of the engagement stuff, you know, stuff like that. Um, if I was just doing this by myself, I'd say it's low, because I don't care, but my wife would probably disagree, so for her, I'll give it a medium. Um, love it, which is just like Facebook like, but it's Facebook love, it's just love it. It's on every page, yeah, that's a low for sure. If that went away, the website would absolutely still serve its purpose. Um, RSVP and wedding invitation. So this is where we literally ask people to go and RSVP. Give the number of people they were uh, gonna bring and what they were gonna attend. Cause we had a rehearsal dinner, you know, we had the ceremony, the reception, all that, and it was all out of town. So, you know, it was a little complicated. That's a high for me, right? That was one of the biggest reasons why we stood the site was that, so that's a high. Uh, the Vantum push menu that just literally is a way of navigation that draws it like Android, that's a low. I don't really care about that. And then Retina. I, it's all right if you don't see me in like ultra high D HD. You don't want to, but yeah, so that's a low two for me. So there we go. We've talked about it. We've talked about what they have did. It's really easy to say how to reproduce these. Contact form seven, I just go and fill out the contact us form. If I, as the site owner, get an email, it still works. Layer slider, I just go to the home page. If the images are still sliding in the exact same location where they were before, it's working. Um, love it, I just go to any page and I push the love it button and it needs to increase by one. RSVP, I just go on RSVP to choose the, choose the stuff and then me as the site owner should get an email. Bantam push menu, I'm not, even gonna, I'm not even gonna test it. It's so low, that's how low it is, I'm not even gonna test it. Um, and then WP Retina, I just get someone with a map to go to the site, inspect the element, it better be Retina. That's it, right? So I just built, we're standing here right in front of you, I just built that plugin checklist for you, right? Not too bad. Hey, if you run a business, you're gonna have some more plugins, no doubt about it. You'll have three, four more. I really don't hope you're over like 20 because that's just, like you, that's a whole different topic that someone else talk about, about why you shouldn't have 20 plugins. Um, but yeah, there we go, guys. We just did that right there. The next part of step one is to do the same thing for your theme and your custom functionality. Um, a lot of times, theme functionality is actually in plugins. So you might be done. Like I'm done as far as themes go. My theme is, is done. All the stuff that the theme really brought to me, it brought me those plugins for. Um, and I don't have any custom functionality, but you might, especially if you're running your business site, it might be hooking up to your you know, database in the back end at, at, at the office so that you can do analytics. I don't know, there's lots of stuff, lots of use cases, but just make sure and write those down and do the same exercise, categorizing, high, medium, low, all that stuff. 
I'm getting way ahead of myself. Do that, do that, do that, right? Custom functionality, you shouldn't have like a million things. That would be bad. It sounds like WordPress isn't your answer if that's the case. I'm gonna let him take the picture again. So the next step, this is where the fun starts because this is the part where a lot of people, this is very new to some people. So step two is get to know your devs. Now, if you have a dev, it does refer to him, but I'm more referring to the devs that truly run your site and you don't even know it and you don't know them, but you're building your business around their plugin, but you have no idea who they are, what they do, are they cool, are they not, I don't know, right? So for your high plugins, you contact that dev or support team. If it's a big plugin, it's got its own website, it's got its own support button, you do it right there. If it's a smaller plugin, you just go to the wordpress.org repo, go to that plugin itself, and just click. There's, a, there's always a support tab, and they'll tell you what to do. It might be contact me right here, it might be let's do a forum post somewhere, I don't know, but they all have it. WordPress has it by default, they have to have it. So contact that dev and their support team. Let them know the specific functionality you're using of their plugin. And open a dialogue with them on that functionality. Ask them if that functionality is a core part of the plugin. Now, if you're contacting Gravity Forms about your form, you know it's a core part. So boom, step one, done, right? But there's some other ones like Jetpack, tons of functionality in that thing, right? Who knows if it's really core to them or if it's like, well, that was kind of an add-on that we threw on later. You don't know, right? I don't know, you don't know. That's why you contact them, open that dialogue. Ask what the future of that functionality is. What, tell them like, hey, I, you know, I built my whole site around this. It's a high criticality plugin for me. What's your, what's your plans for it, right? And maybe it's like, oh yeah, we love it. We're gonna continue to develop it, blah, blah. Or, hey, you know what? This is an afterthought. We did it once. We don't really have any plans. And so then it's like, oh, okay. Well, let's find out a little more. What kind of development cycles do you have? How do you guys get ready for your new versions of WordPress? What is that my piece of functionality? They're really honest with you. They tell you like, oh, we don't do anything. Or, well, yeah, once it comes out, we do it. Or, oh yeah, we install every beta and we check our plugins for it. Right, they might do, it's all, the whole gamut. The whole gamut. But basically, once you've done this, one, you've, you've built kind of the, the rapport a little bit, right? If you contact them again because you're in a big kind of problem, it's not gonna be like, oh, who's this person I've never heard of? At least they've heard from you once before, right? If they're tracking their support whatsoever, they'll see that other interaction and they'll know. Oh, this person looks like a really responsible user. They want to know what's going on. They, you know, they, they really have a vested interest in their site. Then you find at least one alternative to every single high priority plugin. Believe me, that right there will save you one day. It will. Um, and it's not hard. If you've got Gravity Forms, contact Form 7, right? There's a hundred Retina pro, uh, plugins out there. So, you know, that's the good thing about WordPress. There's almost not one plugin of something. There's like a hundred of them. So, boom, get to know them, get it all. Step three, get to know the future. This is where it goes real cool. This is my favorite part, because y'all really get involved in the community. So you, you go to the WordPress.org blog, they break it up into different categories. One of those categories is releases. They only do like, man, I don't know, five posts a quarter. So like, I'm not, I mean, your, email, your email isn't gonna get blown up or anything. You subscribe to releases and you see a beta release, right? So if you remember back to what an upgrade is, a beta is one of the very first iterations of a new version of WordPress. So you look at it because they tell you exactly what's going on in it. And I'll show you a beta release in a sec. Then if you think that there might be something going on or if you don't even know, you're like, I have no idea if this is gonna actually impact my high pri priority plugins. Boom, contact that dev, tell them, hey, just read over the beta release, saw a few things, wanted to know your thoughts. Do you think the plugins, you know, uh, gonna be impacted? Do you think my functionality is gonna be impacted? And then identify if any of your custom functionality may be impacted. If so, if that's really a high priority custom functionality, it might be good to start testing that beta right then. And we'll, I'll show you later how to test the beta, but it really might be a good idea to right then get going. So, but now you have an idea of what is coming and how the site may be impacted. You might be like, hey, I think I'm totally good. I heard back from all my plugin devs. They said no problems. I didn't see any custom functionality being impacted. I'm good to go. Look at that. We're talking months before the upgrade even comes and you are already sitting pretty. You are just laying back going, yep, I'm not even worried at all. 
Whereas before, one, you didn't even know WordPress upgrade was probably coming, but two, you weren't going to do anything about it either. Now, you're so proactive that you're kicking your feet up and you're having a sandwich. So this is what a beta release post looks like. It's, it's really simple. Um, I didn't take the whole thing, but it's only like three more bullets. And it's just like, hey, menus can now be managed with a customizer. Well, it's probably not going to break any of your functionality. They're not changing the way it works. They're just adding a new way it can be managed. Maybe you get to get rid of a plugin. That would be awesome. Getting rid of plugins because WordPress built that functionality into the core is great. Um, take control of another piece of your site with Site Icon. OK, cool. Um, you know, there we go. Put a lot of work into better passwords throughout WordPress. What if you run a membership site and you've got custom login functionality? Ooh, I'd be taking notice to that. Is that going to impact the way my customers log in? Are they going to have to have a much harder password? That could really, really impact people that sign up, right? So let's contact that membership plugin dev and say, hey, what do you think? I saw that they say better passwords are coming. What is that going to do? Is that going to change anything? Have you looked at it, blah, blah, blah? You're going to get the information. You're not going to have to sit there and worry all day. It's going to be great. So you're subscribing to releases right now. When a release candidate post is made, that's kind of like, ooh, um, it's, it's go time. You know something's coming soon. Contact your devs. Definitely contact your high priority devs at that point. Say, hey, there's a release candidate out. WordPress thinks that this could be exactly what they upgrade. What's your guys' plan for testing it? Do you think you're impacted? What, what are you going to do, right? Um, see, see if they think it's compatible. If they don't, definitely press them for a date. Be like, hey, when, when do you think it's going to be ready? When do you think you're going to have an update, right? It's important to set those expectations. Um, at this point, you're also going to want to create a staging site. So I don't know if any of the other guys have talked about it, but you definitely want to be with a managed WordPress host. There's tons of them. They all do one-click staging sites. It's the best thing that's ever happened to WordPress because you can do whatever you want. And it doesn't matter about your live site. So create a staging site. Install the WordPress beta tester plugin. So that's the one built by WordPress so that you can, up, you can update your site to things like betas and release candidates. All right? So we're going to go in, we're going to create that staging site, install that one plugin, and then it's really easy. You just, it's like three clicks after you install it, and boom, you're updated to the newest release candidate, and you're running it, right? So here's what a release candidate uh, post looks like. We've made more than 140 changes. Oh boy, that's a lot. I want to go through there and take a look, just see if anything sticks out. Definitely contacting our plugin devs and saying, 140 changes, you think it's going to impact it? They talk about, hey, uh, if you haven't tested it, do it, though not on your live site. That's why we created staging. Uh, think you found a bug? Post it here. That's awesome. You're now part of the community finding bugs, like making WordPress better. That's great. Um, and then there's talks about the beta release plugin. It's really easy. It's really, really easy, right? It's nothing. So once you've done all that, it is time to test. You're there. You're running the, the latest and greatest version. It's going to be an upgrade soon. So on your staging site, make sure you've updated all your plugins and themes, even though that shouldn't be the case, right, guys? We're always running updated plugins and themes, right? Nobody, nobody runs updated plugins and themes. <laughs> Execute those steps you, you, you made, right? Go through that list. It's, it's pretty easy. I'm, I'm telling you, once you've kind of done it once, you can run right through it. Document each result and the specifics about any failures, and then execute any backend functions that are unique to your site. So backend functions are a little weird, right? You don't have to go test making a post, creating a menu, right? All that stuff that's just standard in WordPress, don't worry, a thousand other people have done that before you. It's if you have really custom back-end functionality. Go and test it, all right? Just make sure in WP Admin you can do whatever crazy thing you built. That's amazing. Um, just check, test that out. So let's do my site real quick, just like this. So we had a kismet. We said it was low. It's not even activated. We don't have to do anything about it. Um, we had the Love It plugin. So I go to a page, any page I want to, go click a link. It loads, click love it, ah, the thing went up one, perfect. Um, the retina thing, I go get my wife's Mac, ask her, I go to the site on it, I expect the element of one of the pictures, ooh, it's a retina element, great, retina still works. Um, the RSVP, I go to the RSVP thing, I RSVP, I choose some stuff, I push go, I get an email as the site owner, sweet, RSVP plugin still works. Uh, contact form, I push the contact us, once again, fill it out, push go, wait a minute, ooh, I get an email, Perfect. Contact form goes. 
Um, I don't care enough about that that plugin that does navigation, so I'm not even going to test it. But if it broke, I'd probably already see it because the home page would be all messed up. Um, that's it. We just did it. The slider. Ooh, good call. Thank you. So the slider. That's the home page. I could I go to the home page. Boom. There's the slider. Right. It's moving. It's doing it. It's doing its job. That's awesome. Um, I would have done that probably on my way to testing the Love It one. So there we go. So realistically, I know we just talked about it, but doing that wouldn't take so long. I'll even go as far as saying it'd take 30 minutes just because I'm slow on the computer, sure. So 30 minutes, I just tested all the things that are critical to my site, and I know that they're all gonna work, and that that upgrade is not gonna hurt me at all. Guys, now I want it. Now I'm like, come on, WordPress, release it. I want the new stuff, I want a faster site, I want you to make WordPress more efficient, I wanna do this. So that's, that's where we are here then, it's go time. So how are the results? No issues, awesome, skip to step five. We just, did, we just did one with no issues, but realistically, there might be issues. I mean, I see, you know, every time there's someone who has issues. So if there are, let's dig on in. Uh, if the issues with the medium or low criticality function, you've got some options, which is good. So, if, whoa, he was taking a picture, go for it. You good? Good. Um, so medium or low, one option is you do nothing because it's not critical, right? It's medium or low, especially if it's low, right? I'll tell you what, I would, I mean, the, the most I would do is go get another Retina plugin, but I'd actually just let that drop. I wouldn't even care, right? So low functionality, it's not critical. You set it yourself. Maybe you don't do anything and you just pick that up at another time, right? Maybe you're trying to build that marketing campaign to grow your business and you don't have time to worry about a Retina plugin. Cool, it's all right. You just made a very conscious trade-off, right? And that's what I'm trying to get us to, guys. We make our trade-offs and we know exactly what we're doing. Instead of just going, I don't upgrade my site because it just works, right? No more of that. You can contact the plugin dev, find out what the time frame is, right? That's probably what I'd do, I guess. If the retina plugin really broke, I'd email them and be like, hey, it doesn't work anymore. What are you planning on doing about it? And then, you know, if they care about at all about their plugin, they'll be like, oh, okay, I'll test it. Thanks for telling me. And then hopefully they come back and go, okay, cool, I'm doing an update like a week after the upgrade's on. Sweet. Uh, if it's quick, like a week after, maybe you wait to upgrade, maybe not, kind of your call. If it's longer, if it's like, well, I hope I'll have it in like a month and a half, I wouldn't wait. I would just go ahead, just go for it, maybe pick one of the other options. The other options is just really to replace it. Custom, you could build something custom, I don't really recommend that, but you could have a dev do it, especially if for some reason you found the one plugin that there's only one of, right? You might have to hire someone to do that if you can't get the, the, the uh, first step to get in the gear and kick them in the seat. Um, or you can find an alternative. Like I said, man, lots of plugins have alternatives. So I would go and check for that. It would, it would seriously take me two minutes to get another Retina plugin. Now, what if it's high criticality? Ooh, boy, we're, we're talking about sites at risk, the business is at risk here. Well, you basically have one option. You do have another one, but you probably won't do it. But contact the plugin dev, find out what the time frame is and be very, very assertive with them. Let them know, hey, I rely on this functionality in this plugin of yours. I just tested it on the release candidate and it doesn't work. This is such a critical part of my site that I won't be able to upgrade until it's fixed. What kind of time frame do you see this being fixed, right? That is a very appropriate way to hold a developer accountable that released something like a plugin into the WordPress ecosystem. That should resonate with him that something he did, someone else is relying on so much that they are contacting them well before the upgrade's even out, right? And it should get him into gear. Because maybe they didn't know. Hopefully they knew though. They've already, they're testing it, they're doing the same thing, right? Or you can replace it, same kind of deal. It's not, I, I really wouldn't recommend it though. Um, when you put something high critical into your, into your business, you probably spent some time doing it and it's not easy to replace. It really isn't. I'd rather we hold those devs accountable and they go ahead and you make sure their plugin works. And hey, nine times out of 10, that's exactly how it works. And they know, and they already have a date for when they're expecting the plugin update to come. But you know too, you're not sitting there going, oh God, what am I gonna do? The site's gonna break, my business is gonna go under. None of that has to happen. That thought never has to enter your mind. So once we're kind of there, now, now it's worry-free upgrade time, guys. You know what's gonna happen. Once all those issues have been resolved, you will have a much better understanding of your site. Think of how much, think of how good you know my site. You've never even seen the front end and you know exactly what it's doing. Like, 
you know my site so well, and we just spent 45 minutes, you know, not even talking about my site, but you're gonna have such a good understanding of your site that you're gonna be, be a better WordPress user. There's no doubt in my mind. You won't fear the upgrade button. It's the silliest thing in the world to fear because all it takes is 30 minutes and you'll know whether you have to fear or not. Or you just know you aren't gonna touch it for a little bit because, hey, I'm not gonna do that to my site, right? You don't fear it anymore. You'll be ready, this is so awesome, guys. You'll be ready for any maintenance or security upgrades that are released. No testing needed. You will never have to test a maintenance or security plugin as long as you are running, or a maintenance or security release, as long as you are running the latest functional release. It's totally fine. You just go ahead, click it, you want it. Yes, make my site more secure. Fix these bugs, this is great, right? You are gonna welcome maintenance and security release notifications. You're not gonna be afraid of them. And you're gonna have a game plan for the next functional upgrade. Now you don't even have to worry about what if WordPress started releasing more updates? Like, it's cool, you've got a plan. It's gonna be good. Like, I can't tell you how nice that peace of mind is. As someone that really just wants to focus on their business, guys, knowing that you don't have to worry about this is gonna be huge for you. And that's where we go into preparing for next time. If you just documented everything we just did, that process will literally take half the time next time. So it, take, it took, I said 30 minutes this time, Sweet, it's gonna take 15 minutes next time. If, if one of you tells me you don't have 15 minutes a quarter for your mission critical website, well, you probably wanna reevaluate your priorities. Um, if you manage lots of sites, the testing plans and the communications to devs get even easier. Because as any of you know, when you're an agency, you stick with what is good and what works. So every time you want a form, you use Gravity Forms. So it doesn't matter if you have 100 sites with Gravity Forms, you still are only sending one email to the dev, and you're still, you might, depending on how really the same you build your sites, you might only have to test it on a few sites. You won't even have to test all 100. Because it's like, yeah, I use this in the exact same framework, so it's gonna work, right? So now you're, you're getting those kind of, those opportunities of scale. You're gonna, it's gonna be even easier. Ensure you plan your time accordingly over the next quarter though. Make sure to leave yourself that 15 minutes, 30 minutes, hour, two hours, five hours, I don't know. It's gonna be in a, some amount of time, but make sure that you prepare yourself. Just keep it in the back of your mind. Just like you do taxes every year, you're like, oh yeah, you know, probably first half of April, I'm gonna to have to set aside some time to do some taxes. Boom, do the same thing, but it's gonna be a lot less stressful doing this than your taxes. And then following this plan takes time. It does, there's no doubt about it, but it also means a lot less surprises. Guys, I'll tell you what, when, I've talk, when I talk to customers and we upgraded their site, because at WP Engine, we upgrade your site for you automatically. And so if you do all this, then you really just sit back and relax. You don't even have to push the button. We do it for you. We take a backup right before we do. We then do the upgrade. We then run some tests. And if we find that your site isn't responding back, we then roll you back to the other one and shoot you an email and say, hey, it looks like the upgrade didn't go so well for the site. You're gonna wanna take a look at some things. And really, I'm just gonna tell you to do this right here, right? Um, but that's a surprise no business owner likes to get. It's the worst surprise. They're like, oh my God, my site, how long was it down? What's this, what's that? I'm never gonna be able to upgrade. I hate upgrades, this is the worst. No, 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 that's never gonna happen to you again. You're going to stop all the surprises around your website because like I said before, you got into this business to make a business, not to manage a website. Not any one of you were like, I cannot wait to have the maintenance concerns that come along with a WordPress site. No, none of you said it. You never will, it's okay. But doing this is gonna make it all a lot better. All right, that's my stuff, guys. Q&A, anybody have any questions? Yeah. How often do you find the theme breaks the site? Not a ton, not really not a lot. It's always plugins like, so let's say, let's say. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, that's great. Uh, her question was, how often do you see that a theme breaks the site? So it's, it's not a lot, especially when it's a theme that you downloaded and you just use. It's when people start to go crazy and they customize a theme and they don't make a child theme, which is the right way to make a theme. Um, that's kind of when I see it happening. So, but that was functionality, right? And so when you do the upgrade, you go, let's make sure my theme works. So not a ton. What else? Yeah. One of, one of the plugins that I know I have a problem with was created by MailChimp, and it was in communication through API with Google. Gotcha. So with their analytics back end in the dashboard, and I was aware 
before one of the recent security updates that it was going to be deprecated, so it was no longer going to function. Gosh, yep, yep. To me, it was a low because it's not functionality of the e-commerce site. Sure. But for the team that uses it, it was a high. Gotcha. Okay. How long is it safe for me to sit and wait to see, you know, deactivated, whether or not it's actually going to be resolved for functionality? Because to be honest, I have I've never found a replacement since it's so specific to manage. So, you know, I would say you can you can wait on your functional update, but you shouldn't wait past the security update. What, what what is more critical to you? That team getting those analytics or your site not getting hacked? Like that is a trade-off that I don't think any of us business owners would make, right? And if it's that critical, oh boy, we, we probably need to talk to some devs then and see how can we recreate this, right? We need to take, totally remove it, don't leave it deactivated. Oh no, I'd leave it deactivated. That's probably fine. Yeah, that's probably not a big deal. Yeah, especially if one day you think they might do something about it. Yeah, you don't have to remove it. Deactivate is usually fine. Yeah. What else? Core. You could, core. The three types I put up there are core upgrades. Yeah. So you have theme updates, plugin updates, and then WordPress core updates. Are there any other updates outside? No. Not 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 inside the WordPress ecosystem. There is on whatever server you're running and all that. But like at a managed WordPress house, we take care of those for you, and they won't break your site. Yeah. But inside of the WordPress ecosystem, there's those three. And the one that's scariest is the or is the core upgrade. Yeah. So oh, sorry. That's okay. Last question. Oh, last question. Um, I'll come right to you next. I, I don't want to take up the whole time. No, it's fine. Uh, so, if, when you're updating your um, plugins, uh -huh. that's relatively straightforward. Usually, yeah. And the good part is the plugin devs are very good about saying, test this first. Right. So, like WooCommerce, they're amazing at telling you, test this in staging first. So, I actually recommend testing all plugin and theme updates in staging. For, I do. But, they're, they're so much safer sometimes. All right, cool. Last public question, I guess. And I'll Just a slide. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to post them on my Twitter. Dustin Mesa, D-U-S-T-I-N-M-E-Z-A. I'm going to post them there. Cool. Awesome, guys. Y'all have been great. Thank you so much. <laughs>